let me let me start that again. And the reason I'm going to start it again is because I didn't start recording for the YouTube version. I don't want the YouTube version to miss this part. The YouTube version missed that other part. That was fine. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you need to go to the Liberty Principal page, Facebook page and hear the beginning of the show because I had a bit of a rant leading up to the show. So for many of us out there today, we imagine that the darkness is coming. The age of the Neo-Puritan has come. The tide of history swings back from the Dionysian to the Apollonian. And if you're unfamiliar with this, the Dionysian, Dionysius is the god of wine, the god of dance and all that. And uh, Apollonian is the, you know, the rigid, disciplined, uh, if you, I mean, just using terms that America uses, Dionysian would be like kind of liberal and Apollonian would be kind of conservative. But who would have thought that both the Dionysian and Apollonian ages, at least the most recent ages in America at least, would be ushered in by the same political spectrum in America, the so-called left. They're the ones that, that, that pushed back against the Apollonian 50s and the 40s and 50s and and they ushered in the Dionysian age you know 60s 70s whatever and now now they're making the push they're pushing back Apollonian and it's the same characters that are doing it well uh, maybe some of them are dead but the ones that are alive and the new breed of the American left they're the ones that are pushing for the for the, for the retreat from the Dionysian and back to the Apollonian. So the American political left is firmly in control of the key institutions of this land. And, and honestly, before about a year or two ago, I, I might not necessarily have believed that. For instance, I actually believe that it was still largely the conservatives that controlled the marketplace. But that's not true. The American political left dominate the marketplace with many businesses make it clear, making it clear that they stand with the Neo-Puritans of the American left. And what, whatever you feel about the North Carolina bathroom laws, I'm not taking a position here one way or another. From my perspective, the whole thing is, is moot because, you know, a state is deciding it's, it's coercing one way or another. So it's not my battle. But still... The NFL came out and threatened North Carolina unless they went along with the American political left. I, I think that's very telling. When you had uh, just recently the amount of companies that have decided to, to turn on the NRA and you have, you have calls for, 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 for funds to divest of investment in in gun sales and gun manufacturing they have very real power and i would say they they have most of the power in the marketplace and they're they're they they have long dominated the american education centers and their power can be seen in raw display as as we just outlined with the recent staging of the anti-gun anti-human Anti-liberty rallies allegedly organized by teenagers at the direction and inspiration of, uh, I'm going to call them just for the fun of it, I'm going to call them fifth column operatives under the aegis of the so-called Women's March. And they have also, as we know, they've long controlled the media, both the news as well as uh, entertainment, and that's across the board, music, arts, film, TV, and, and and they're clawing back. They're taking control of social media in what I believe is ultimately a futile effort to stop the flow of liberty-advancing information. They might as well be lighting a match to dry a tempest. The calls for stigmatizing gun ownership are only increasing and will do so across the fronts of all major institutions, even if they only represent a small fringe minority. And, and don't kid yourself, folks. This, this, this is assault on gun ownership. Gun ownership in and of itself, I know, I mean, I make a big deal of it, and this is his Daily Monday, so, you know, our opening segment is full auto it's all about guns 
I, I love guns for, for a lot of reasons, but you know, there, there's a lot of other ways that they can control you even while they allow you to possess guns. They allow you, I'll put that in quotes, allow you to possess guns. But this is a symbolic high ground. If they can take this symbolic high ground, this symbolic high ground will turn into very real high ground. High ground. It'll have a chilling effect across the land as 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 less and less people will dare poke their head from beneath the covers to to squeak against the the the, the neo puritans of the american political left because if they can take this hill yeah nobody's going to doubt that they can take any hill they want and and that that minority even though it's a it's a fringe minority the American political left. I'm not. I'm not talking about the rank and file folks who vote Democrat. I'm talking about the rabid, uh, anti-free speech, anti-gun ownership. Uh, the, the 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 let's not let's deplatform people. Let's let's punish anyone who dares dissent in any way, shape, or form. Not not the whole left is really on board with them. There's a lot of folks in the left that are kind of looking at that and like. Wow, that's that's a little bit extreme, but that doesn't matter. They're being led and they're still following the flow of that of that small fringe frothing minority. And that minority contains the bulk of cultural power and it is not without significant political power as well, uh, with hopes of the American left growing only greater, greater as as you know, they've experienced recent victories and special elections that bolster their base, preparing them for a return to political power in the halls of D.C. So should they return to full D.C. power and not merely the political power they currently hold at bureaucratic levels and, to a certain extent, uh, jurisdictional levels, uh, although I do think the American right has gained some grind there, ground there, the future looks very dim for the conservatives, the American political right, and the consolidation of power by the neo-Puritans will be nearly complete. Now remember, I said this is a word of encouragement, so stay with me, because right now it doesn't sound like a word of encouragement, and I understand that. What's a person to do who sees in the American political left something far more dangerous and insidious their particular brand of authoritarianism uh, that that can even be seen in the authoritarian nature of the American political right. And, and I want to offer a qualifier there. The, the difference between the American political left and the American political right, I mean, many of us, we recognize, you know, the so-called horseshoe. There are differences. They have different victims. They have different winners. They have uh, different uh, cultural mores that they want to advance and different, different cultural mores that they want to snuff out. But the American political left has significantly more power, and now they are beginning to feel it and to understand the power that they have. And this understanding is bringing them further out of their tyrannical authoritarian closets. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't say with 100% certainty what the American political right would be like if it had the same type of power that the American political left has. I would suspect that you would see them coming out of, of their authoritarian uh, tyrannical closets as well but they don't have that ability they they they're they're playing a weak hand and when you're playing the weak hand it's uh you're the one that's calling for the rules to be fair when you're the one that's on the receiving end of the power that's when you're concerned about the rules being fair when you're the one doling out the power then you're not so concerned about the rules being quote unquote fair so really, if if for no other reason than the that the real power advantage of the American political left holds over the American political right, I will say that you should be wary of them far more than you should the American political right. And I can tell you, if the power advantages were reversed, 
and I would be focused on the American political right and their nationalistic state god death cult. But as it is, the American political left holds the real power in America today, so they're my focus here. With all that being said, should you be paralyzed with fear? Should you surrender the stage to the new priest of the new Christendom, the progressive state god death cult that is coming your way? Well, I say no. There's, there's absolutely no need to surrender. There is no need to leave the stage, though perhaps it is best that some of us do leave. Uh, and that's simple. There's there's a lot of work that needs to be done underground. And for others, for people such as me, there's much work to be done above ground. <laughs> and my goal as an above ground resistor to the coming progressive state god death cult is not to scream fear. It is not to ignore the reality around me, even the parts of that reality that, that, that can actually be frightening to comprehend, like my, my interaction with uh, the high school kids involved in, in the walkout protest and, and their, their rabid authoritarian uh, youth supremacist reactions and, and how they were, how they sounded. They sounded like any other fascist that you would ever hear, uh, proclaiming their ideology, whatever it might be. Replace gun and put in God. Uh, replace gun and put in white race. <laughs> they all sound alike. My goal as an above-ground resistor to the coming progressive state god death cult is to show the ways that individuals and free associations and and even in some cases, coercive enterprises are intentionally or unintentionally building and revealing the tools that will undo the very controlling dreams of the progressive state god death cult. Like, like what's going on in Wyoming? Wyoming sees this, this the, the state of Wyoming, the coercive enterprise of Wyoming, the little fiefdom within the American coercive enterprise. They recognize... And a, a, a potential economic advantage for them, being able to attract uh, high quality, high skilled people making a lot of money that will bring a lot of business, a lot of wealth that can be taxed, that can raise revenues for the coffers, for the owners and managers of that particular coercive enterprise, if they just create a safe haven for blockchains and cryptocurrencies. So they've passed all these laws just recently. They're, they're unwittingly allowing Wyoming to become one of these laboratories of liberty because it serves the coercive enterprise's best interest. It's kind of like, you know, what happened with the... with, with <laughs> when, you, when you started to question the supremacy of the Pope and you had King Henry, Henry VIII, who, who he, he was no friend to liberty. He was no friend to human beings have, having any kind of, quote-unquote, right to, to pursue their own understanding of truth. He wasn't for any of that. But, but he helped the Reformation in significant ways uh, challenge the authority of the Pope because the Pope wouldn't let him divorce. And so because the Pope wouldn't let him divorce, King Henry became an unwitting advancer of liberty. So that's, that's what you're going to see because coercive enterprises, they're almost always, not always, but almost always, they have very short-term goals. <laughs> these, these, the, the owners and managers of the coercive enterprises, a lot of them, they just want to get their cut and get out. And that means that they're going to make deals and they're going to you know, be opportunists. And in being opportunists and in making deals, they are going to allow the tools of liberty to flourish unwittingly. And, and there are some key technologies that are emerging, technologies that IP bandits and state regulators imagine 
they can contain and control with 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 magic slips of paper, but but they can't. I, I mean, I love the IP folks. There's you go to iState.tv, you'll see tech and science stories all the time, and uh, there's there's talks in there about my IPs, and I'm probably going to be doing story tomorrow about uh, I can't remember if it's Xerox, Canon, or no, no Nikon. Is it Nikon? Uh, one of those companies. It's like a camera company, I think. And uh, they have a, a new technology that they're developing for 3D printing. They're going to be developing a 3D printer that has self-correcting features. So if it makes an error, it can actually correct the features. And they're talking about patents and everything else. And uh, that's great. You go ahead and patent that. But I'm telling you, there are open source uh, rebels out there that are going to take your technology and they're going to use it anyway and they're not going to give big one about your freaking IPs so go ahead with your freaking IPs and see how see how well you can enforce that in the future so what what they can do they can slow down the tools that are bringing to human beings uh what are they e even whether they dream of governance outside of the coercive enterprise or a model or not <laughs> the, these human beings are, 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 are being handed the power to say no. They're being handed the power to be anonymous. They're being handed the power to be self-reliant. They're being handed the power to be secure among their own free association. And now these folks don't have to be ideologues. They don't have to be idealists. They see an advantage. So what's going on? I covered a story today in Philadelphia, the, uh, the, the soda tax, and how, how, what do you know? A black market has emerged. People trying to avoid the tax. They're not rebels. They just don't want to pay that much for soda. And then, you know, the entrepreneurs that are going out there and they're buying soda outside of the city and bringing it in, you know, they're, they're actually, they're, they're soda runners. They're soda smugglers. <laughs> they exist. Soda smugglers exist in America today. You just take that in. Soda smugglers exist in America today. Just take in that beauteous, and I do mean beauteous sentence. It really is. It's a, it's a message of hope. Soda smugglers exist in America. These folks are entrepreneurs. They're not idealists. They're not ideologues. They're not, they're not fighting to smash the state. I mean, there's a couple of them. Maybe there's agorists out there, I'm sure, maybe, that, that have that in mind. Most of them, they're just like they see an opportunity. Whoa, I can make money here. Wow, the state just created an opportunity for me to make money. I'm in that. I am totally in that. These are the things that you're going to see. And I don't believe that, uh, I mean, the only way, I'll say this, the only way that they can stop what's coming is if they simply kill everyone. And who knows? I mean, if they do that, that's, yeah, I got nothing for that. <laughs> I got nothing for that. But I, I'm, I'm thinking that they still need a significant portion of people to get the things that they need. Maybe not as many as they have now, but they still need a significant portion. So I don't think killing us all is is actually an option and 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 right now so I, I say go ahead and and keep glancing into the face of the emerging progressive state god death cult go ahead it's it's absolutely good to be aware of your surroundings but whatever you do don't live there don't be consumed in your flaming flow of the of the latest outrage manufactured by the operatives of the progressive state god death cult nor nor I'll say the other side you're you have flaming flows by the right that imagine that they can that they can somehow combat the flaming flows of the progressive state god death cult but uh, honestly i think they're fighting a losing cause but there is news out there that can help you, and, and it can help you right now. And there's information out there that can guide you, that can prepare you to build your own liberty. 
right where you live and to find others doing the same. I don't know how much of you, what, what you know about history, those of you listening. I, I am sure that there are some of you that know this history uh, far better than me, but I'm, I'm not without my knowledge of history. And I, and I studied to some serious degree Christendom, what, what led to the collapse of, of, of the empire of Christendom. And this is, for those of you who don't know, Christendom is what was called what Europe during the Middle Ages up to the Renaissance, the, the, the domination by the Catholic Church of Western Europe. It was called Christendom. The collapsing empire of Christendom could not stop the advance of technology that empowered people. And again, it powered the people, willingly or not, to discover for themselves what is, I'll put this in quotes, truth, such as we can know it, such as they can know it. It, it put into their hands, through the Guten, Gutenberg Press, it put into their hands the power to read information that was hoarded and protected by the elites. And it put into their hands the power to share their own thoughts and their own ideas with many more people around them. And now, today... The, the, the proverbial Christendom of today, it doesn't have to deal with gu the Gutenberg press. And there was a lot of effort done by the, the kings and queens and popes and bishops to try to contain this, this wicked machine. They, 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 they had licensing. They, they punished pamphleteers who were, who were printing pamphlets without a, a license. They had, they had star chambers to determine who could get a printing license and who couldn't. Sound like what they're doing with guns, maybe a little? But, but they're not just dealing with the Gutenberg press, though. They're dealing with multiple Gutenberg presses. And, I, I mean, I'll just, just name a couple here. There's more. Uh, there's, there's the blockchain. There's 3D printing. There's, there's m mesh networks. And, you know, w one area, I know it sounds, it'll sound kind of weird, but it's an area that I follow. And you'll see stories about this regularly on iState.tv because I think it's significant. And that's, and that's battery tech. And battery tech is significant because it's lowering the cost of batteries and it's creating batteries that require a lot less charge time that last a lot longer, that are creating a lot greater power autonomy for individuals than for communities. So those, there's just a few technologies that, that they have to contain. Not only, and, and they can't just, even, even if they could, and I don't believe they can, but even if they could, they can't just shut down the blockchains. They can't just, stop 3d printing they can't just stop mesh networks and they can't just put the advancement of battery tech on hold because if they do then coercive enterprise competitors will take advantage of their halting of these technologies and they'll use them against them and they'll use them for war every single thing that i'm naming here blockchain 3d printing mesh networks battery tech all that all that's being used for their war machines and they, 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 they can't bury the tech. They can't end the tech. They need it. They need it because they're still competing with other coercive enterprises. That's one of the huge advantages that we have. I have to take a sip here. That's one of the huge advantages we have in, in the cause for, I'll, I'll, I'll call it liberty, is, is that there is this competition among coercive enterprises. America's not the only course of enterprise. China's not the only course of enterprise. And, and even within the United States of America, like the example I gave with Wyoming, there's states competing with each other. So they can't just shut it down. Like I said, they are going to be unwitting advancers of liberty. They are building the engines that will eventually power 
uh, the destruction of their own empires. The empire that will soon be built by the progressive state god death cult, it's going to be short-lived. And when I say short-lived, I mean like five to ten years kind of short-lived. And any attempt by the conservatives to take advantage of the vanquishing of one enemy of human progress will be met with the same resistance that will soon fell the progressive state god death cult. So I want to say to you, be hopeful, be determined, take action, don't retreat. If you're, if there, there, there is such a thing as strategic retreat. And so for some of us, there could be a reason for strategic retreat. I mean, I, I, I use strategic retreat now and then, but I mean, it, <laughs> don't retreat in defeat. If you're retreating for strategic reasons, fine, but don't retreat in defeat. Embrace the change that is to come, for it will fell beasts. Beasts that are thousands of years old. Beasts that have outlived their usefulness and their power. The age of liberty is soon upon us. One obsoleted state function at a time. So there you have it. I hope I don't I don't know if that helped any of you. I don't know how many of you folks uh, uh, agreed with me or not. I'll go through here and and read a couple comments here. Uh, Becca says you were not wrong and they're coming at you on his behalf kind of proves your point. It couldn't really prove uh prove my point <laughs> uh, because they wouldn't listen. Larry says, oh, our worst fears are coming true. New video, my worst day ever by fall. <laughs> nah, it's not though. Hopefully you stuck with the whole thing, Larry, and you hear that it's not. The darkness is coming, as Larry said. He's quoting me. And uh, he says, definitely not fear porn. No, it's not. It's not fear porn. And if you listen to the whole thing, you realize it's not fear porn. It's, 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 it's a darkness, but it's not a darkness that's going to stay. And that's the point. There's, there's, there's something bad coming down the pike, but the thing that's bad that's coming down the pike, it, it, it doesn't have the power to hold on to the ground that it's about ready to take. And uh, Larry got a little dig in at uh, Professor Rambo. Seriously, <laughs> Dimitri's best appearance ever jacob uh rebel you joined us late so you're a terrible human being so i'm going to get to uh that went a little longer than i thought it would and i guess that's okay i'm gonna get to <laughs> i'm gonna get to our top story so i'm gonna go on over to i'm just i'm not gonna play the bump i'm just gonna get to it you see that if you're looking at the video if you're listening on audio, well, then you don't see the video. The video is of uh, a little ad for agora.threadless.com. And there's a T-shirt that I hope you guys buy called, uh, well, it's, I think I think Bodhi Agora, he's, our, he's my co-host on Tuesdays. He uh, has a T-shirt that he designed. It's a, a saying of mine that I asked, I said, dude, can you make a T-shirt? And he said, yes, I can. And it's, uh, it's got my saying, and it's got like two 1911s behind it. It's pretty cool. It says, I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is. Yeah, when you say that to a gun grabber, that, that pretty much shuts the conversation down. Now, don't get me wrong. If you say that to a gun grabber, they will pretty much consider you a total nut burger. But I feel the same way about them. Absolutely. There, there is a divide. There is a significant divide be between my understanding of sanity and their understanding of sanity. So I'm going to get to this. This is our top story today. And it is, this is where we get the title for our show. So I want to make sure I cover this story at least so that people see the title of the show. And it's, 
it makes sense. And uh, but, 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 what what is the title of our show, dude? I forgot the title. How to be a surrender monkey in one easy NRA step. So, <laughs> uh, David French he wrote an article in in National Review in which he lauded the NRA's recent move to support gun violence restraining orders. And clearly, David French does not understand the mentality of the Gun Grabber Cattle Car Guide Club, or perhaps he does understand and is working in collusion with them. I think that might be the case. Apparently, the NRA fits into that category as well. They either don't understand the Gun Grabber Cattle Car Guide Club or they're working in collusion with them. And again, let me just say, my suspicion is the latter rather than the former, but I don't want to say that with absolute certainty. The NRA is getting behind the gun violence restraining order as a way, presumably, or I'm going to say ostensibly, and, and when I'm using the word ostensibly, I mean... I'm suspecting that uh, they're giving an ostensible, believable reason, but it's not the real reason. The real reason they're doing it is because they're in collusion. But I don't know. I'll, I'll give them. I'll give them like a two percent chance that I'm wrong. So uh, this 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 could ostensibly or presumably be a move to placate the gun grabber cattle car guide club. Or possibly to preemptively cut them off from making more draconian anti-gun moves. Let's 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 push this legislation out there, and that away, you know, we say, "Lou, dude, we did something serious. We did something really, really serious to address this epidemic of uh, of violence across America, which doesn't exist. This epidemic of mass shootings across America, which doesn't exist." You know, when I when I hear the 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 little Stoneman kids. The little, the little youth supremacists out there saying that now, now their latest thing is that we are, we're the mass shooting generation. I mean, I just can't imagine what the kids in Syria want to say to these kids. <coughs> they probably, and justifiably so, so want to smack them upside the head because you are marching in fear of of something that doesn't exist. There is no epidemic of mass shootings. Meanwhile, you're silent when your own government that you are now advocating for for taking more complete control over our lives, you're silent when that government is bombing kids over in Syria. I can't imagine how pissed these Syrian kids must be. If They're probably not even paying attention. But if, but if by for some weird reason they happen to this happened to come across whatever whatever path they have that would let them see something as ridiculous as the as these little youth supremacists walking around with their with their with their uh, the neo neo puritan uh, armbands yeah that doesn't look creepy uh, declaring that they're the the mass shooting generation yeah I I think I would. I think that if I was a a Syrian kid, uh, an Afghan kid, uh, a kid in Somalia, I mean, there's a lot of kids out there that uh, look up in the skies and wonder, is that a drone or is it a bird? And if it is a drone, is it an American drone or a Russian drone or whatever, whoever's bombing them that day? You know, is this the day I die? Yeah, yeah. They they're actually experiencing mass shootings, mass bombings by uh, assault gov, which you're seeking to empower. But uh, let's get back to this article. So David French opened up his article celebrating the NRA's capitulation, along with a video of the NRA's announcement that it supports the GVRO. With uh, well, well, first let's read his headline. The NRA makes a wise, principled decision to support gun violence restraining orders. You see how civil that is. You know, it's, 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 it's. I mean, David French. He's, he's part of 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 the social pressure campaign against gun ownership. And here he's offering the gun owners who maybe maybe they feel a little 
beat up. Maybe they feel like, man, maybe I really am a racist. Maybe I really am a bigot. Man, maybe I am. Maybe I really am a bloodthirsty killer. Man, I don't know. Society doesn't like me. And then David French says, wise principle decision. Oh, if I support this, then I can be back into the civil crowd. I could be respected again. I won't be a bigot. I won't be a racist anymore. I see what you're doing there, David. It's pretty sleazy. So he opens up and he says, on Wednesday, the executive director of the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action uh, tool, uh, Chris Cox tool, took to NRA TV with a critical announcement. The NRA blah, blah, called on Congress to provide funding for states to adopt so-called, quote, risk protection orders, unquote, another term for the gun violence restraining order that Mr. David French announced he discussed in another piece shortly after the Parkland School Massacre. See, that's, that's David French. He's kind of like the good cop of the bad cop. The bad cops are the youth supremacists that are going around saying everybody's racist and bigoted and they want to kill kids and that anybody who, who wants to hold on to their AR-15 this point is is just, they got blood on their hands. They're they're evil. They're Satanists, whatever. And then there's the good cop who's like, yeah, man, you know, you know, don't be so tough on them. You know, you know, we can, you know, how about this? You know, we make this little deal here, you know. We're going to come up with this program, this GVRO. It's real simple, this GVRO. It's real simple. Well, what it is is, uh, you know, you, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna define who dangerous people are, and we're going to have a list that the state is gonna define as to who can decide who 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 potentially dangerous people are, and we're going to have hearings, and we're gonna have. Don't worry, man. We're gonna have due process, man. Don't worry. We'll we'll define what the due process is, and uh, we'll bring them in, and we'll go take them through the whole due process thing and uh you know if uh if if the hearing finds that they're that they're a dangerous tool we're gonna take their guns don't worry they can appeal they can get it later on i mean really trust us the government doesn't abuse its power never has never will really i mean it's 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 it, it respect it is a respecter of lines in the stand so <laughs> Of course, the NRA is, is, is coming out in support of that. So in addition to putting tremendous trust in the Gun Grabber Cattle Car Guide Club, the NRA is also helping to advance the fear porn of the anti-gunners that we live in a dangerous land with an epidemic of gun violence in the form of mass shootings, which is not true. Your chances of being involved in a mass shooting are less likely than being struck by lightning. So the NRA would have you believe that you can write legislation <laughs> that would limit the state from broadly interpreting what constitutes, quote, dangerous thoughts. The NRA would have you believe that you can write legislation that would limit the state in how it forms hearings that meet the standards of due process as articulated in the Fourth Amendment of the Bill of Rights, which has protected so many people through the years. Many hey, people. Without that piece of paper, man, the Bill of Rights, man, it's like, I bet you, I bet you if the Bill of Rights didn't exist, that if we ever went to war with a country and we had like a, a, a number of people that maybe had ethnic ties to that country, that, that the United States would, might, might very well round them, up, round them up and put them in camps. But thankfully we had the constant, what? Hold on, I'm getting um, my producers. Japanese, what? Internment? Oh, oh snap. Anyway, let's just ignore that. So the NRA would have you believe that one step backwards in the fight to preserve individuals' abilities to acquire and possess tools of self-defense, in this case guns, will prevent the Gun Grabber Cattle Car Guide Club from pushing for more aggressive anti-gun legislation. You know, folks, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. Color me skeptical, though. Uh, from from literally head to toe on this one, that uh, such legislation will significantly limit what constitutes dangerous thoughts, what constitutes dangerous people. I cannot with 100% certainty say whether or not David French and the faux gun rights group, the NRA, actually believes the swill they're pouring for the masses. But I can say, well, well I'll say this. It's either one of two things. 
one, they are in the camp, their controlled opposition, or two, they are dumb as dirt and maybe dumber. Maybe if 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 you had a Jeopardy contest in which you had David French, an NRA person, and a pile of dirt, the pile of dirt wins. Probably like three to negative five thousand and negative seven thousand or something like that. But the pile of dirt wins. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead. I will predict it. If somebody can put that uh, Jeopardy contest together, I will put up significant forms or significant amounts of other people's money, uh, you know, the government way, uh, at, at, because I feel like I'm going to make a lot of money for a lot of people, and I'll be sure to get my cut from that after the, after the pile of dirt beats the NRA and David French at Jeopardy. At the end of the day, the most effective check against dangerous people having guns is a community around them that can directly hold them accountable. Because, well, yeah, do you, do you really? I, I don't, all things being equal, I don't want dangerous people to have guns. All things being equal, I don't want suicidal people to have guns. I definitely don't. And they create a scenario for an argument that you can't win. <laughs> Which is, they, they imagine, first off, they imagine that they can actually keep, I mean, there may be some exceptions, but they can imagine that they can actually keep the guns out of the hands of actual dangerous people and that they will prevent suicidal people from killing themselves. There may be one or two here or there, but in the aggregate, it's highly dubious uh, at the least. And so for you to say, listen, man, if, if you unshackle people and enable them to actually hold one another in check, that's going to be a far more effective way to keep the guns out of the hands of dangerous people and suicidal people than trying to give the power of the government, like like in the shirt, giving the power of the government to define what a man-man is. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll end with that again. I would rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is and apparently the nra disagrees with me and so apparently does david french which that part doesn't shock me as much and really the nra thing thing doesn't doesn't either i i love i love the comments from larry he's he's a good sport he's a loving person and i can i can, I can tell that he really enjoys the shows i think larry that what you really that that for you this is like your hate porn you come here to hate. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad I can offer that service to you. He said, does anyone else want to rub Paul's face and hands for a smoothness test? You know, honestly, if I saw it, I'd want to, too. Oh, by the way, Jacob, you said in quotes here, it's you supremacist. No, I'm not saying you supremacist, although that's good. No, I'm actually saying youth, youth supremacist, because they imagine that somehow because they are the youth, that they have special knowledge, powers, and abilities that the rest of us should bow down to them and and basically give them all the power. And, I mean, they know better than us. I mean, they've, they've only existed on this planet for 15, 16, what odd years, but uh, apparently they, they learn more than people that are 40, 50, 30, 60, 70. They know more than them. They've, they've got it down. They, they can guide us to the utopian motherland which is really simply the progressive uh, state god death cult if they don't know that maybe a couple of them do i seriously doubt it i i i seriously doubt that most of these kids really understand the beast that they serve and the demons metaphorical uh, the metaphorical demons if you will that they're enabling with 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 the actions that they're choosing to take and just a couple more comments from Larry here. I love Angry Babyface PG. I do too. That guy's awesome. And then uh, Larry says Angry Babyface Paul is making sense. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for that. That just goes to prove that a Babyface Paul can still make sense. And with that, we've actually come to the end of our show. We did manage to cover an actual story that we said that we would cover. We didn't cover the fall of Afrin. 
uh, in iWorld and iPrepper. Oh, man, iPrepper. We didn't cover bacon in a can. I really encourage you to go to the show notes. It's linked in the video description. If you're listening to the audio, go to isheadlines.com and look for the show for March 19th, 2018. And uh, you got to find that bacon in a can story because it'll show you how to preserve your bacon in, in an SHTF situation. And those of us that love bacon, that's, that's an essential. That's, that's, that would be one of the essentials that you'd, you'd want to have that done. So I want to thank everybody who joined us uh, here for this show, especially the ones that took the time to comment. And uh, tomorrow I will be on my personal page, Paul Gordon personal page. Look for the picture with the dude with the AR-15. Remember the AR-15 was lost tragically in a boating accident. Uh, look for that guy, Paul Gordon. And uh, we'll be on tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for headlines you may have missed. I have already picked the stories that I'm going to be writing about tomorrow. And I may even be doing some prep work tonight after the show to get ready to produce the content tomorrow that uh, we use in headlines you may have missed. And then tomorrow night, Bodhi Agora will join me on Is Daily Tuesday. I don't have those stories picked yet. Don't know what they're going to be. And with that, I say good night to everyone and and be be hopeful, be optimistic, be action oriented. Don't be drawn in by the fear pornage. Being aware of it is good. Even being entertained by it. I'm somewhat entertained by it at times. But remember there's, there's a lot of ways right now for you to build liberty right where you are and to connect to people that are doing the same. Good night, everyone.